live from WTVO Rockford and your home team. Eyewitness News at 6 starts now. The death toll continues to climb as a string of powerful storms and tornadoes leave a path of destruction across parts of the Midwest and the South. Christmas is a few weeks away and many people are starting to do their holiday shopping. We caught up with a few entrepreneurs who share some unique gift ideas for the holidays. The very popular Laurent House is decked out in holiday cheer. Hear why it's important to check out the works of one of the most hit, famous history's most famous architects. Good evening, I'm Michelle Rave. Thanks for joining us. Alexis Carpello has tonight off. Happening now, we're continuing to follow the fallout from more than 22 deadly tornadoes ripping through the Midwest and the South, killing dozens of people, including in our state. In Edwardsville, Illinois, officials have now confirmed at least six deaths and multiple injuries after storms caused this roof to collapse at an Amazon distribution center. Governor Pritzker visiting the area this afternoon, joining emergency responders and giving the latest update over the damage. Some workers speaking out in shock, thankful for their lives. My initial reaction was like, man, it could have been me. You know, it could have been any one of us that are, you know, in these fulfillment centers or not even just Amazon, but, you know, in any of these warehouses, like, you know, it's an industrial area. Like so many people go to work, whether they're driving or whether they're actually on the inside, you know, and we're in these buildings and like you really never know. President Biden tweeting today that federal officials are working with our governor and those from five other states as damage assessments continue. Kentucky right now being hit the hardest. The governor now believing 70 people may have died in his state, but fears that number could rise. Here's Rena Roy with the latest. A string of powerful storms and tornadoes leaving a path of destruction across parts of the Midwest and the South. Last night I thought it was as bad as it could possibly be, but you come back in the daylight and it's even worse than you thought the night before. Kentucky, one of the hardest hit states, the governor declaring a state of emergency. This has been the most devastating tornado event in our state's history. The level of devastation is unlike anything I have ever seen. Sadly, far too many homes that people were likely in, entirely devastated. The town of Mayfield nearly leveled. They were going to focus on those who have lost so much, and that's where our hearts are with them who have lost the people they love and the property and the way they make a living. The courthouse clock tower collapsed, businesses left in ruins. Now we clean and we get a game plan on how to open back up and start serving our community. Further east, dozens of homes in Bowling Green damaged or destroyed. And in Erlington, Kentucky, a tornado caused this freight train derailment. There were no reports of injuries or fatalities. This nursing home in Arkansas also hit by a tornado. First responders rescuing at least 20 people trapped inside. At least one person was killed, five others injured. The president speaking to the nation this afternoon. It's a tragedy and we still don't know how many lives are lost or the full extent of the damage. But I want to emphasize what I told all the governors. The federal government will do everything, everything it can possibly do to help. Rena Roy, ABC News, Mayfield, Kentucky. The American Red Cross is already on the ground assisting families in the Midwest and South, now raising disaster funds for those impacted. If you'd like to make a donation to this cause, head to our website for more details. A 62-year-old man has died after being hit by a car last night in Loves Park. It happened on North 2nd Street and Landstrom Road around 6 p.m. last night. The driver on, in the car, of the car remained on scene to cooperate with Loves Park Police. At this time, the identity of the victim is not being released as police are still investigating. Christmas is only a couple weeks away and last minute shopping has officially begun. Nikel Delgado went to some local markets this morning. She spoke to some local entrepreneurs about how they're preparing. Nikel? Michelle, City Rockford Market and Edgebrook both held markets this morning showcasing local entrepreneurs. For last minute shopping, I talked to some of the local entrepreneurs. The twist is many of them seen the value in recycling and personalizing items just in time for Christmas. I decided to turn it into something beautiful that would be a keepsake to keep track of her pieces and keep them safe and protected. 
For Janet Davis, this was only a hobby four years ago with turning her grandmother's jewelry into a vault-like protected art piece. She thought others would like the same. It becomes then a keepsake for their family members as well. So each person in the family gets a little piece of grandma. Beverly Cook Harris, owner of Secondhand Spirals, says giving a second life to items is what she enjoys best. Oh, it's great. I love shopping small business and supporting local and seeing so many people out doing the same thing is so cool. One person's trash is another person's treasure. Local entrepreneurs have seen a need to jump into action with vintage apparel. We've gone through some uh, curbside. <laughs> Devastating hearing that people threw things away as well, and you're like, no, why? Right. Somebody yeah. loved that. Lucas Bucher and Brett Norgard say that vintage clothing are unique items that are hard to find in stores. Janet also tells me these are special ways to keep the family history alive this holiday season. Try to keep things real with you know where we came from and what was important to someone who you know we may not even know anymore that we'd like to be able to respect and treasure their gifts. If you haven't started your Christmas shopping, you might want to start soon. For more information on these small businesses, go to MyStateLine.com. Michelle? Nicole, thank you for that report. People also crossed off items from their wish list at Laurent House Gift Shop. The Frank Lloyd Wright Design Home offering tours today and tomorrow. Frank Lloyd Wright is considered to be one of America's most famous architects. The home was originally designed for a client who used a wheelchair. They will also be showcasing mid-century Christmas decorations and the Laurent's personal collection of ornaments. The house here draws about 2,000 visitors a year. Uh, our, our audience comes a lot from the Chicago suburbs, but all across the United States and even around the world. We have tour companies that visit us for, uh, twice a year from the UK, groups that come from the Netherlands, Australia, Japan, all coming here to see the work of Frank Lloyd Wright. And you still have a chance to get a tour. The cost for adults is $25, and for children ages 8 to 18, it's $5. There's also a gift shop there as well. Norwegian holiday traditions take center stage today. The Sons of Norway of Rockford Valhall hosted its annual Jewel Tree Fest, where Norwegian holiday traditions are celebrated. Many people attended this event, especially since it was canceled last year. Guests were able to eat some traditional Norwegian treats and learn more about the culture. This is one of the many traditions that we celebrate. So. Again, being able to have it this year when we weren't able to have it last year is um, really important to us. About 80 people showed up to today's event. Organizers telling me the Stockholm Inn was the perfect place for the event. School districts around the country are dealing with severe staff shortages, leading some to question if they will be able to keep schools open for in-person learning, as COVID cases continue to increase through the winter. As Alexandra Lamone is keeping you connected to the nation's capital. From teachers to bus drivers, at many schools around the country, there just aren't enough employees. Some have left because the pay is so inadequate and the work hours are so irregular. Those staff shortages have forced some schools to return to virtual learning temporarily, something that could happen more often if the number of COVID cases continues rising through the winter and makes shortages even worse. Secretary of Education Miguel Cardona says the money Congress approved in the coronavirus aid packages should help keep students in the classroom. In the short term, we need to make sure we have enough staff, maybe bringing back retired teachers and helping incentivize that. Some districts are considering allowing retired teachers or those nearing retirement to work while also receiving their pensions. Getting experienced teachers in there is helpful. I think school systems need to be creative. Ohio Democratic Senator Sherrod Brown says ensuring all staff and students are vaccinated will also be critical. Some people have left the profession because they're concerned about their health. But Republican Pennsylvania Congressman Mike Kelly says implementing mandates could backfire. This idea of vaccines and mandates has become a political battle. I don't think it's really a policy battle. Once you tell somebody you're going to have to do this, they start to back off. In Washington, Alexandra Limon. Now, your first worn weather forecast from meteorologist Jordan Wolf. Yesterday, there was a significant outbreak of severe weather through the Midwest and the South as well. We had a total of 44 tornado reports, hundreds of wind reports, and dozens of hail reports all associated 
with this storm system. In addition to this severe weather, we also had some significant winter weather associated with this storm because of how powerful it was. This same storm system that brought us tornadoes of the south brought us near 20 inches of snowfall in Minneapolis and surrounding areas. We also were not directly impacted, but we did see to, uh, a great amount of rain. We had over an inch of rain. It was our second wettest day of the 2021 and the wettest day since uh, December of 2015 as well. Now, we are seeing all of this system work its way out now. We are drying out as the system is progressing on to the east. And with that, our temperatures, our, our skies are clearing as well. And we're seeing clearer conditions on the back end of that. This is our Mercy Hill SkyTrack camera here in Rockford where the skies have cleared and the sun has also set, dropping our temperatures down just a bit. We're sitting in the mid 30s and low 30s across our viewing area. Those will continue to drop just a little bit more into the 20s tonight. It's also a little bit breezy out, so wind chill might be a little bit of a factor with winds anywhere from five to near 15 miles an hour. Wind gusts could potentially be a factor into the day tomorrow as well. We could have wind gusts close to 30 or 35 miles an hour. That lasts through the evening tomorrow. So that's something to also keep an eye on as this system is departing, still causing wind on the back end of it. Temperatures will continue to drop through the night tonight. Tomorrow though, look at this, we get temperatures near 50 degrees for our high. We do drop back down through the evening and then on Monday, we get temperatures once again surging. So that warmth is just a couple of days away than what we've been promising these last uh, few days as we've been telling you about this. We have a lot of clearing through this evening and into the day. Look at this, not even any clouds moving in until we get into Sunday afternoon. So very clear skies through the day until tomorrow afternoon. And that clearing then continues and we get some more cloud cover working their way back in, but nothing will be precipitating, so we should stay pretty dry on the back end of this system. Here's this trough in the jet stream that helped develop that very strong low pressure system through the day yesterday, but on the back end of that, we have the reverse, a very large ridge developing, and that'll help us to bring warm temperatures up from the south, that'll cause our temperatures to increase over the next few days. That doesn't last forever though. We have another system rolling through, bring us a cold front during the day Thursday, bring our temperatures back down as we head into the next weekend. If we recap this tonight, we'll be seeing temperatures in the 20s. It'll be a little bit breezy at times still. Through the night to day tomorrow, we'll see temperatures warming back up into the 40s. Afternoon clouds, just a couple of those there. Over the next seven days, we get very warm conditions beyond the weekend and into next week. We have even a day where we could reach into the 60s before a cold front drops us back down heading into next weekend. Now, the Napleton Sports Desk with David Greenberg. All week long, we've been previewing the Bears and Packers game coming up tomorrow night on Sunday Night Football. We've covered all aspects of the game, but there's always more to talk about. In this case, it's the return of Allen Robinson. Robinson hasn't played since that Week 9 Monday night loss in Pittsburgh. Reports say this is the healthiest he's been all season. He did not carry any injury designation as of yesterday. Going up against the Packers, this game just means more, and Robinson knows it. Once that ball is kicked off, you know, the records don't matter. The only thing that matters is, you know, who comes to play that day and, and, and who has the best performance that day. So for us, you know, that's what we're aiming for, you know, trying to continue to put together a good week of practice and then going out there and executing on Sunday. Well, Robinson returning is good for the Bears, but cornerback Jair Alexander returning from injured reserve is good news for the Packers. Alexander's missed the last eight games with a shoulder injury, but he's likely to play on Sunday. So expect those two to face each other a lot tomorrow night. The, the way Ja has been, um, you know, the last however long it's been, eight or nine weeks, you know, he's here, he's in the building, he's, you know, around, but it's just been nice to kind of interject him back into football, having him out on the practice field, um, just because of the energy and the juice and just the, the natural passion that he brings. Guilford Vikings had been out after quarantining due to a COVID outbreak within the program. But the Vikings returned to action last night, picked up a big 69-66 win over Hananiga. They were back in action today, hosting the Belvedere Bucks in a makeup game. Good ball movement by the Vikes. They find Bryson Hodge. He gets that to fall from the elbow. Hodge had 13. 
For Belvedere, Attilio Gostin drives the lane, finishes the Euro step. He also had 13. Guilford's Malachi Johnson's got a bright future. Splits the defenders, gets it to go with the left. This time, Johnson going to look to the corner for Samaj Smith. He takes a step to his left and buries it. Guilford won this one with E, 62 to 36. Check out some girls' action. Lutheran ladies hosted Yorkville. How about this one handed bounce pass from Michaela Hufens to Maddie Wilhelmy for the easy deuce? Then it's Hugh Fines who gets the feed and her shot. Nothing but net. Crusaders offense is really good when number 20 is running the point. Another great find leads to a bucket by Sidney Carlson. Hugh Fines was outstanding again this afternoon. Lutheran plays so quick in transition. Heaven Johnson gets it underneath and puts it in off the glass. Lutheran wins this one big over Yorkville. In the NHL, Blackhawks are in Toronto taking on the Maple Leafs. They jumped out to an early lead thanks to Jonathan Taves. Now goals in back-to-back -back games after not scoring once up until last game. Ice Hogs are also in action tonight at home taking on the Henderson Silver Knights. They're in the first period and are also, are they, they are in a scoreless tie. Lastly, in the NBA, uh, the banged up Bulls are down in South Beach without six of their players tonight. Five of them are out isolating the league's health and safety protocols while Alex Caruso dealing with a hamstring injury tip off about a half an hour away at 7 p.m. And Jordan is back with one last look at our forecast. We've had some severe weather the last couple of days. A lot of rain yesterday, but it seems like it's going to warm up the next uh, upcoming week. Oh, yeah, for sure. With this departing system, we're seeing a lot of sunshine on the back end of this here on our first one interactive radar from Rockford Auto Glass. A lot of clearing skies, and with those clearing skies, look at those temperatures warming up through the next few days. We're going to get into the 50s and then eventually even into the 60s there on Wednesday. Unfortunately, good things don't last forever. We have a cold front that comes through, brings our temperatures back down as we head into next weekend and we should be in the 40s and that's where we're going to be this weekend. And that's our show. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tonight at 10.